Hello and welcome back to another episode of Straightforward Tanks, a series in which I'll show you how to paint your tanks without using an airbrush. This time I'll be tackling the German desert camo and I'll be using the Luxsturm armored car as my subject. And as always, I'll be using the Army Painters range of paints to do so. So here we have the Luxsturm that I'll be painting as part of the tutorial and as you can see it's already assembled and I've primed it using the Army Painters Skeleton Bone Spray Primer. This is because it gives us a really nice base in which to build upon for our desert camo scheme. Now the first task is to apply a mixture of Monster Brown mixed with some glaze medium. Now I'm using the Vallejo glaze medium here, but you could also use the Games Workshop's Lamium medium instead. We want to mix it in roughly uh, two parts uh, glaze medium, maybe like two to three parts depending on how thick you want to apply it, and then one part Monster Brown. And we'll be using this to apply it into the recesses. So with my mixture of Monster Brown and the, the Glaze Medium, I'll just be applying this into the recesses. And as you can see, it's very, very thin in its application. And all we want to do is just apply some shading into these recesses, which you can see I'm just doing here. And what you can do is once you've finished applying the first layer, which you probably can't see very well here, it's very, very subtle at the moment. But once you've finished applying the first layer, you can then start applying more layers and building them up, which is why it's important to start thinner than you actually want to go, because then you can always just build up from it afterwards. So, as well as the recesses here, I want to uh, focus on these bottom panels as well and build up as I get up the sides of these skirts here. Just get a bit more paint on the brush. I want to steadily build up the transition between the Monster Brown and the Skeleton Bone towards the top. So, as you can see, the Monster Brown glaze has given us this really nice kind of transition in the recesses. It kind of looks like dust has accumulated and dirt as well. It gives us some really nice, uh, brings out the detail in the miniature. Now, the next step is to further this detail by performing some targeted washes into all of these recesses here, this time using soft tone ink. So for this step you want to grab yourself a thin brush like this here, and I've just mixed in just a small amount of water with the ink, just to thin it down ever so slightly. I'm going to be very carefully targeting this wash into these recesses here, and just creates a much more definite line, really brings out the detail, especially uh, around areas such as the grating here, we can just pretty much just apply that straight into the vents, really want to darken them up in there, and then just anywhere where you've got these panels, and you can just place the brush inside like so. So as you can probably see from this miniature here, we've got a lot more definition in the recess, especially around the areas such as the vents here. Now the next step, we really want to bring out the edge detailing of this. We'll be using a dry brush of matte white. So I have my brush here and I've uh, put some uh, matte white onto the end and just removed most of it onto a spare piece of paper. Now what we want to do is just very gently just drag the brush along these edges. And as you can see, it'll just very carefully bring out with this highlight, you just sort of see the white along the edge there. We don't want to apply too much, we don't want to have too strong a highlight, we just want to be very, very subtle. I want to drag this across all the areas where we've got these raised edges, which is just the hatches along the top there as well. And this will just really bring out some of the definition in these panels. With the base layer completed, we now have a really nice starting point in which to build up the rest of the miniature. So we're going to be painting some of the storage items, notably these jerry cans on the front. And in order to make them contrast a little bit better against the armor, we'll be painting these with desert yellow. So for this step, you will want to mix in just a small amount of water into the mix just to improve the flow slightly. It gives you really nice and even coverage as well. Now just be very careful when applying this step as you don't want to overspill onto the areas that we've already painted. So with the jerry cans completed, the next step is to start uh, painting some of the other tarpaulins that are about this miniature. I'm just going to be painting just this one on the back here, and for this I'll be using army green. In much the same way as I painted the jerry cans, I'll be painting this tarpaulin, and I've just mixed some uh, just a small amount of water into the mix as well, just to thin it out slightly, just to make the application uh, much more smoother. And then once this layer has dried, I'll be applying a second layer over the top. So next up we want to paint any of these wooden handles and the storage items you see on this axe that we've got here. And for this I'll be using leather brown. So when painting these areas you do want to be quite careful, you don't want to um, overspill as the areas are quite small so I'm just very carefully using my leather brown here just to pick out the wooden handle on the axe. With the wooden areas completed, the next step is to paint the exhaust at the rear here, and we want to get a really nice rusted effect. So we're starting off with a base coat of Chaotic Red. So by painting these with Chaotic Red, we get a really nice deep red rust color to work um, up from in the next step. So we want to make sure we get a nice and even coverage again, just mixing in a small amount of water into the mix just to improve the flow slightly. And then when this is dried, we're gonna be applying a second coat over the top. 
So the next step after we've painted the chaotic red base coat is to just apply some more rust specs across these exhaust areas. And for this, we'll be using fur brown. Now in a similar way to how we dry brush the edges of the actual chassis there, we're going to be uh, dry brushing some of the fur brown onto these areas. And I've just removed most of the paint off the brush and we'll be using the stippling action. This just creates this um, mottled effect there. You can see it's almost like a rust effect just on the red areas there. And we want to build this up over a few layers and this just creates some really nice rust effects on the exhaust there. Once you've completed painting the rust on the uh, the exhaust here, the next step is to start painting the metallic areas, such as the axe here. We've got the bolt cutters there as well. We'll also be painting the straps and also the actual tires themselves. We're painting all of these areas with matte black. So for this step, we're using the matte black mixed in with a small amount of water. I'm going to be picking out the tires here. Just being careful around the hubs not to overspill. And then when we've finished painting around here, I can use a larger brush to spread out and get the rest of the tire like so. Now this goes the same when you actually come to paint some of the things like the straps on these uh, jerry cans there. You want to be very careful and use a thin brush if possible. With the black base coat completed, the next step is to really bring out some of the detailing in the black areas. At the moment, it's looking very flat. So what we'll be doing is using a highlight of uniform grey, but at the same time, we'll also be painting any remaining jerry cans on the vehicle. So you can approach this highlight in one of two ways. First of all, you could just use a, um, a thin brush like I'm doing here and just drag it along the edges just to create a thin grey line, like so. Now let's bring out some of the detailing there. Alternatively, you could use a dry brushing technique, uh, similar to the way I've done it on the pre other areas of the vehicle, such as the uh, the edge and on the actual armour itself. And I'd recommend using that on the, the tyres especially, as they are quite large areas, and highlighting them this way may be time consuming. So now that we've completed the grey areas with the, uh, the grey highlight around the tyres and also the other black areas on the miniature, the next step is to wash over all of the stowage items that we've painted in the previous steps. This includes the jerry cans, the, uh, the tarpaulins that we've got wrapped up on the back here, and also the exhaust as well. We'll be washing over all of these areas with a strong tone ink. So by performing this wash, we actually get some nice shading in the recesses here. Now I've just mixed in a small amount of water as I don't want to apply it too thickly on these lighter colours such as the green the grey and also the yellow. But when I come to wash over the exhaust at the back there, I want to be a lot darker, so I'm going to be applying it pretty much straight out of the bottle. I want to make sure that pulls into all these recesses and really enhances this rust effect that we've got going on here. So at this stage, the Luxturm is pretty much completed. However, it's very pristine at the moment. It doesn't look like it's been in combat at all. So we really want to remedy that by applying some weathering. Now these steps are optional, just depend on what kind of uh, result you want. But before you do start weathering, make sure that you apply all the decals that you want to apply, such as uh, these ones on the turret here. Now the first step is to apply some chipped paint and rust effects to the armor. And for this, we'll be using Oak Brown. Now instead of using a brush, I'm instead going to be using a piece of packaging foam that I got from a blister. And I've just um, added on some oak brown there, I've removed most of the excess. Now what you want to do is just very gently drag this along these edges. And this will just create this kind of rusted chipped effect. You want to do this on the edges where you would imagine wear and tear to take place, such as these edges here as people have been climbing up and it's been driving through obstacles and such. You want to just very, very subtly apply it. And then once you've applied it to the edges, you can also just apply some small amounts just in the sections of the panels. And just anywhere where you'd expect um, traffic to be, so people climbing up on the back here, you'd expect some on this back plate on the back here as well. With the oak brown step completed, the next step is to apply some oil marks to the armor. And for this, we'll be using Strong Tone ink. So as well as oil marks, we can also simulate where rust has mixed with water and it's dripped down. So especially the areas where we've got the recesses like this, what we want to do is we want to place some of the um, strong tone ink inside. Just put a little bit more on my brush there. And then we want to very carefully just drag it down here. Almost create like a natural dripping effect just coming from the source. And we can also do this around areas where we've got these pits and grooves. You can just about see there just along the edge and we can make it so it pools just down the side. So, I just want to apply this across different areas of the miniature, especially around the back there where the engine is. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more oil and things pooling around that area. With the oil streaks completed, the next step is to start applying some uh, dust and sand into the tires. And for this, we'll be using Skeleton Bone. So, I'll be approaching this step in a similar way to how I approached the brown chipping along the edges there. I'll be using my foam. However, I've applied a little bit more Skeleton Bone than I did before. And this time, what I'll be doing is I'll be kind of stippling but then also wiping as well just to create this dusty effect so you can just about see them 
occurring around the, the treads there. And we really want to work it into the treads. If I just show you the side here, we want to make sure we work it into those uh, recesses there, and then up the tire as well. And here we have the completed look Sturm. Now, whilst I've used an armor car for this tutorial, you could apply the same techniques to any German vehicle. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please do let me know in the comments below and also subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future videos. Additionally, if you'd like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by heading on over to my Patreon page, which you can find a link to on the screen now and also in the description below. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which will really help me in producing future tutorials. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.